I'm very personally very interested in the factory farm issues. Uh, we're fighting it at Whole Foods on a number of fronts. Uh, one of the ways we're, we're working on it is with our five-step animal welfare program, uh, working with the Global Animal Partnership. I was asked not to talk about that today. Apparently that's very controversial with this group. But for those of you that want to look further, you can look at the website, uh, globalanimalpartnership.org. We have 140 million animals that are having a better life through this program. But today I'm going to talk about the healthy eating revolution with, for better lives for humans. And uh, uh, so let's get into that because they only give me 30 minutes. Oh, um, Joel Furman's going to speak after me, and I'm like a disciple of Joel's. So I'm going to be, I'm glad I get to go before him so I can, I can get a lot of the stuff that uh, I get to get my slides out there first. If we, the first part of this talk is kind of grim as we're talking about the health problems in America. Look at the leading causes of death in the United States. Heart disease and stroke equate for about over 40%. Cancer rates. Uh, medical care is the third leading cause of death in the United States. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, Eighty percent of the dollars we spend on health care in, in America come from lifestyle and diet diseases. Eighty percent. And uh, we're not, there's not going to be a vaccination for cancer. There's not going to be a pill you can take that makes heart disease go away. People have to change their diets and their lifestyles. Here's the breakdown of that death by medical care. Um, Adverse drug effects. We have a lot more people die from prescription drugs in America than we do from illegal drugs, which is sobering to think about. The diseases that are killing us are really diseases of affluence. Uh, these diseases are not really found in, in rural societies that eat traditional diets. Obesity, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and autoimmune diseases. They can be avoided uh, completely until you're really old and probably avoided your entire life uh, through proper diet and healthy lifestyle habits. Look at the obesity rate in America. Two thirds of our citizens are now overweight. Half of those are obese. About a third of Americans are obese. And the trend lines keep going up. As you can see, here it is over the last uh, 35 years. We've gone from about 15% of adults that are obese to uh, almost 35%. If I had more time, I'd show you this on a state by state basis. Over the last uh, 30 years, it's, it's very sobering to realize how fat America is getting. It's, it's a really challenge. And the saddest thing is what's happened to children. Um, more than 10 million U.S. children, American children, are now obese. Type 2, uh, type two diabetes, which relates to obesity, has increased 48% in just the last five years. 70% of 12-year-old children show signs of heart disease. And 90% of our children have a diet-related condition. Uh, this generation of children will be the first generation of children in American history who will probably not live as long as their parents. Again, heart disease is still the number one killer. I told you this was depressing initially. 40% uh, uh, die from heart or circulatory diseases. It's been the leading cause of death in America for the last 100 years. In the next 24 hours, over 3,000 citizens are going to die from heart disease. Almost the same number as died from 911. We spent well over a trillion dollars uh, on trying to be more secure in the last decade, while this many people die every single day from diseases that, a disease that no one should ever get. Cancer is what scares the hell out of people though, and we all know people, possibly people in this room who've had cancer. It's, do you realize cancer rates have increased every year from 1935 to 2005? and they're continuing as we export our diet around the world, and we see cancer rates exploding all over the world. Cancer is a serious problem, and more Americans have died from cancer in the next 24 months than have died from all the wars our country's ever fought in the entire history of the United States. And we know cancer is mostly caused, it's not random, it's mostly caused by diet and lifestyle. You can see that diet and tobacco together equate from somewhere from 65 to 90 percent of all cancers. Things like uh, medication, radiation, pollution, alcohol are relatively small contributors to cancer. Type 2 diabetes 
Um, more than 8% of Americans are diabetic, and the health complications from diabetes are, are horrible. Uh, it's a horrible disease, and yet it's exploding. It's becoming a pandemic in America right now. Industrial farming methods, interestingly enough, uh, food's getting cheaper in America. Uh, about 100 years ago, we spent about 50% of our income on food. And you can see that now, in the last 50 years, it went from about 17% uh, of our uh, of income. Now it's down to about 8%. So we're spending less and less money on food. At the same time, we're spending more and more money on health care. As you see, the GDP has gone from about 4% in 1960, uh, 1960 to about 17% of our GDP right now. You see these juxtaposed. Less and less on food, more and more on health care. Interesting. I wonder if there's a connection. This uh, stole this from Joel, uh, or borrowed it. I think he doesn't mind if I use it. Uh, this is the breakdown of, uh, of the American diet. If, if you were a diabolical terrorist and you wanted to kill people in America, don't blow up bombs. Just feed them the American diet. <laughs> Here it is, 62% of all the calories we eat come from processed foods. S vegetable oils, sweets, refined calories. Animal foods account for 25.5%. Unrefined plant foods, which is what we should be eating up to about 100% of our diet, only accounts for about 12.5%. And a huge percentage of that, almost 40% of that comes from, from potatoes. And more than half the potatoes are fried potatoes. So it's even worse than it looks here. We are a nation of sugar junkies. We now, the typical American consumes 28 teaspoons of added sugar per day. I don't consume hardly any, so somebody's getting 56. <laughs> that equates to a three pound bag for every, uh, every person in America every 10 days. And uh, consider one 12 ounce uh, soft drink has about 10 teaspoons of sugar. Here you can see soft drink consumption in America over the last uh, 60 years. When I was a kid, uh, Coke came in these little, uh, little bottles that were about six ounces. And uh, now people buy them in these two, li two liter containers. Uh, in, in my family, you only got a Coke if you were really good. It was a special treat, because you know my parents were, I know it was just sugar water, right? And, uh, I was not always good, so I didn't always get the Coke. Uh, <laughs> look at cheese consumption in America. 1915 to 2010 has gone from about three pounds a year to 32.3 pounds a year. Uh, and cheese is about 70% fat. It's, uh, Neil Barnard argues it's addicting. And based on a lot of the people I know, it's the single the vegetarians who'd like to become vegans but just can't imagine giving up cheese, uh, it's the single, probably the most difficult uh, food for a lot of people to give up. Uh, I do want to take on the myth of heart-healthy oils. Um, I do think yep, olive oil is, not, if I had more time, I'd get into the, the history of how olive oil became what it is today. And, uh, but it, make no mistake about it, olive oil is, is not a healthy food. It's not something you should be consuming. Um, it, it's empty calories, two tablespoons of olive oil, it's got 240 calories, it's the most calorie dense food you can have. It has very few nutrients in it. Um, and studies show that uh, the monosaturated fats of olive oil can produce just as much cardiovascular disease as saturated fats. So you should either eliminate these oils, which is what I've tried to do in my own life, or certainly minimize them. Look at the nutritional value of one tablespoon of olive oil. 120 calories, all from fat goes right from your lips to your hips. And look at the nutritional value of it. It's got no vitamins, it's got no minerals. It's, don't eat it. Look at the longest lived peoples of the world. This, this is from John Robbins' book, Healthy and 100. Uh, and you can see these, these peoples, they live routinely well into their hundreds. They don't get the same kind of lifestyle diseases that we get in America. And then the sad is a standard American diet. So you can see that uh, uh, they eat more, a greater percentage of their food comes from whole uh, uh, starch foods, percent of their calories from carbohydrates. Uh, they, they eat half as much fat as Americans do. They eat surprisingly about as much protein. Uh, 
and, uh, but they're getting it from plants mostly instead of animal foods. And as you see, percentage of uh, diet from whole plant food goes from 90 to 99% uh, versus only 12% on the standard American diet. Incidentally, we don't know of any cultures in the history of the, hum of the, of the human race that have ever been vegan. Yeah, those of us that are vegan are engaged in a great dietary experiment that's uh, not been done before in any kind of mass way. Uh, but still, the healthiest peoples don't eat very much animal foods. We're looking at 1 to 10 percent. No, almost no salt, salt consumption. Salt's highly addicting. I know Joel's going to talk about that. They don't eat any refined sugars or refined food, and they have 0 percent obesity. Here's the good news about all this bad diet, that healthy food can make a huge difference. Um, most diseases are preventable through healthy diet, particularly through eating more fruits and vegetables. Um, we know this lowers the risk for heart disease, stroke, many cancers, diabetes, and many other related health conditions. Heart disease is completely preventable. No one should ever get heart disease. It is something that is almost completely related to diet. Um, and. Doctors Ornish, Esselstyn, McDougall, and Furman have all shown that heart disease can be prevented and reversed through eating a whole foods, plant-strong, nutrient-dense, and low-fat diets. Um, Colin Campbell, I'm probably everybody in the room has read the China study. There's probably no single book that's done more to promote uh, uh, vegetarian, vegan uh, lifestyle than that particular book. Uh, he shows that you can definitely lower cholesterol through diet. Uh, I've seen it happened in my own life, and I've seen it happen with thousands of Whole Food Market team members at this time, and I'm going to talk about it in a minute. Research shows that if you can get your cholesterol below 150 and maintain it there, almost nobody dies from heart disease that keeps their cholesterol below 150. So if you, know, you need to know your numbers. You need to keep your, your, you want to try to keep that cholesterol below 150 and your LDL below 80. Hopefully Joel's not going to contradict that when he gets up or he might. Um, let's see. Fruits and cancers. Uh, if you haven't read Joel's new book, I'll do a commercial for Super Immunity. It's an amazing book. He does great documentations that show vegetables in particular help prevent cancer. Also, beans he's gonna, uh, and uh, uh, certain fruits, particularly the cruciferous vegetables, are amazing uh, nutritional powerhouses. You need to be eating those foods every single day. And, uh, but Joel's going to talk more about that. So now I want to get into what Whole Foods is doing. Um, We've looked around and we decided that our government, our medical establishment, our universities, and the food industry in general, they're not going to do the educational reforms that are necessary to change the diets of America. They're too, the vested interests are too great. Uh, so we've decided that it's going to be part of our purpose, our higher purpose, and part of our mission to try to educate people about it. Uh, we've created a, a scientific and medical advisory board. These names are probably familiar to all of you. Uh, Colin Campbell, called Esselstyn, McDougall, Neil Barnard, Joel Furman, Michael Clapper, Scott Stoll, and John Robbins. Um, these are the four pillars of healthy eating that Whole Foods has identified and we're promoting in our stores. Whole Foods, plant strong, healthy fats, and nutrient dense. All four are necessary. We do think that Whole Foods is the most important part. I know a lot of unhealthy vegans, junk food vegans. And so the challenge I want to put to the people here, since probably most people here are vegans, is if you want to promote um, people not eating animals, you need to be as healthy as possible. You need to radiate vitality and the, the life force. And that means you need to eat a really healthy diet. It's not enough just to avoid eating animal foods if you're eating all these refined junk foods. And I've just known a lot of activists over the years who they feel so guilty, they don't have time to cook, and they just want to be working for the animals, and yet people look at them and say, I don't want to be like him, I don't want to be like her, because she's sick all the time. He's not healthy. Uh, so there, you, you've got to realize that people pay a lot more attention to what you do and how you look than necessarily what you say. So Whole Foods is extremely important. We think that's the most important part. But plant strong is obviously very important. We show the China study shows that 90% of calories should come from plant sources, no more than 10% from animal foods. John Robbins says the longest lived peoples of the world tend to have 90 to 90% come from whole plant foods. Uh, Dr. Ornish and Joel Furman advocate only a very small percentage of calories from animal foods. 
and doctors Esselstyn and McDougall advocate 100% of calories, from, and Barnard advocate 100% of calories from plants. Healthy fats. People are very confused about fats. Uh, simple, get your healthy fats from whole foods. Don't get them from animal foods. Don't get them from refined uh, plant foods, such as uh, vegetable oils. Instead, realize that, first of all, every food has some fat in it. So if you're eating whole foods, you're getting fat in every mouthful. And then get them from your nuts and seeds and avocados if you want more concentrated sources of it. Uh, minimize all the extracted oils and processed fats. Reduce or eliminate the consumption of animal foods. All right. What does nutrient dense uh, mean? This is Dr. Furman's uh, uh, monumental contribution to nutritional science. Not all whole foods have the same nutritional value. Some have many times the nutritional density per calorie of others. So nutritional density is calculated based on the micronutrients per calorie, uh, vitamins, minerals, and the phytochemicals. Uh, basically, our bodies are capable of preventing and reversing many diseases if we have a high density of micronutrients in the diet. Dr. Furman has shown that the raw, uh, the most nutrient dense foods are the raw leafy green vegetables. They're like the superstars. You should be eating those in large quantities every day. Next to solid green vegetables, and as you go down, it's interesting, look at the very bottom. Oils and refined sugars, basically Zippo. And you get refined grains, then you get cheese, full fat dairy, red meat, eggs. So one of the myths that, you have, that we need to take on as we try to promote is that people believe they've got to eat animal foods because they believe those foods have, where do you get your protein? You're not going to get enough vitamins and minerals. That's all myths propagated by the meat and dairy industries. In fact, animal foods are nutrient, they are not nutrient dense. They are low in nutrients on a per calorie basis because they have so many calories in them. So this is one of the best arguments we can make is that these foods, the animal foods, are not as good as the plant foods. They do not have the same density of micronutrients in them on a per calorie basis. Whole Foods is promoting this from the, uh, the Andy uh, score, Aggregate Nutrient Density Index, so that people can see we're promoting this in our stores, so they can see that the vegetables and the, and the whole plant foods are the most nutrient dense foods, and the animal foods are less nutrient dense. This has been a huge wake-up call for literally millions of our customers who we've seen our, our sales of things like kale and uh, uh, watercress and uh, uh, collard greens explode in our stores uh, as people discovered the amazing nutrient density of these foods. Here you can see a kind of a breakdown. Uh, Dr. Furman scaled it on a zero to a thousand and you can see that the greens are right there at the top, and you can see kind of what's at the bottom. One of the things we're doing, we want our team members to be healthy. So if you work for Whole Foods, you automatically get a 20% discount if you work for our company. But we wanted to incent our team members to uh, get healthier, so we created a, I'm into steps. Uh, whether it be for animal welfare or for healthy living. So we created four additional discounts that you could get if you work for our company. A bronze, silver, gold, or platinum card based on objective criteria, whether you smoke or not, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, and your body mass index. Our scientific and medical advisory board uh, advised us on these, and, 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 and it was really kind of their consensus that these were the, uh, the the right steps for us to take at this time. So you can see where they are. It's a very big deal at Whole Foods to get an incentive discount card. We started this in 2010. We had 7,500 team members qualify. And that went up 40% in 2011. And we expect it to continue to go up. And uh, it's, it's a very big deal to have your incentive discount card. It's kind of like a, it's what American Express hopes to get. Uh, they charge a lot of money for their card. We actually, the team members are very proud to have their platinum card or their gold card. Uh, we're also taking our most at sick, our most, our sickest team members, those who are obese, those who have heart disease, those who are diabetic, or those who are very high at risk, those who are obese. We put them through what we call a total health immersion program, where we take them uh, off for a week, and we do intensive uh, nutritional education, and we and and healthy lifestyle changes, and with uh, all doctors supervised. So we do a blood test. 
uh, when they come in and we do a blood test on the last day. It's sort of astounding the results. We've now had uh, over 1,200 team members have gone through this program in the last year and a half. It cost us $3,000 a person to put them through it. And we've seen dozens of people lose over 100 pounds of weight in less than a year. We've seen diabetes reversed for, uh, for, for dozens of people, heart disease, people getting off their medications. What's amazed me is how quickly the human body will heal itself if we stop poisoning it and we give it the density of micronutrients it needs to heal. Um, that was surprising. It was such a wake-up call for me personally. It's like, wow, this is unbelievable. So here are our doctors, Dr. Dr. Furman, Dr. Lesselstyn, and Dr. McDougall. These guys, uh, uh, I, I think it's funny, they agree on like 98%. And uh, it's kind of like the animal welfare movement. Uh, uh, there's a lot of fighting about the differences uh, and, uh, uh, between how pure you are and how pragmatic you are. Same thing in the healthy eating uh, movement as well. Lots of squabbling about the 2% differences. Um, we're going to be taking our total health immersions out to the public in 2012. Probably not on week-long retreats. We'll probably funnel those into the existing doctors like Dr. Furman. We're going to start doing city-by-city city, uh, uh, weekend immersions, which will be a lot less expensive, just a few hundred dollars, because it won't invo involve the same kind of doctor care. We want to get the ideas out there. Um, probably the most important thing we're going to be doing, which I think is utterly revolutionary, is we're creating wellness clubs. We've got four open now, one in New York, one in Chicago, one in Boston, and one in Oakland. And it's kind of like a health club. You join, you pay a monthly um, membership fee, and then we have this uh, intensive education classes. So that, what you get for your, for your monthly fee is you get unlimited education classes. We take people through kind of the curriculum that we do in the total health immersions, but spread out over a longer period of time. Cooking classes, pantry makeover classes, as well as sleep, uh, sleep therapy, quitting smoking, exercise. It's a complete uh, wellness type program. Um, and we also give people a 10% discount on about 5,000 items in our stores that are the healthiest foods, like all our produce, all of our, uh, our bulk foods that are, you know, not the candies, but the healthy uh, uh, dried bulk foods uh, and center store uh, foods that are low in sodium, no sugar, uh, that type of thing. Uh, as well as uh, a healthy supper clubs. We have supper clubs at our stores at night. So the members will get huge, they get, they get large discounts off of that. It's open for the public at large. And uh, we're gonna, in 2012, we're gonna be extending this to an online uh, wellness club. So you can get the curriculum online. You can still get your discount card. We, but we've discovered that for people to make permanent lifestyle changes, four things need to happen. One, you've gotta have your consciousness raised. People are not conscious, if they're not aware, they won't be able to make the permanent lifestyle change. Number two, they need to make progress. So you need to see your numbers. You need to see that you're losing weight. You need to see that your cholesterol is dropping. You need to see that your blood pressure is dropping. You need to see that you're, you're, that you're getting healthier. That's very reinforcing. Um, the third thing you have to do is people need community. That's the secret to AA and all the 12-step programs. It's very difficult. We live in a, a world of people that think we're nuts for uh, for eating, wanting to eat a, eating a whole foods plant strong diet. And um, some people can do it by themselves, they're heroic individuals, but most people, peer pressure draws them back. And so you need to create a community of people that share your, so when you're tempted to eat french fried potatoes, you can call somebody up and say, I'm thinking about going to McDonald's and getting some fries. <laughs> Don't do it, I'll be right over. And they, you talk them down. <laughs> our wellness clubs are free for our team members, and uh, we, we are going to have doctors working with as well. We have different levels that are going to be in the wellness club because we want <clears throat> we want to get we want doctors to have a different role. We want doctors to be there, not to heal the sick so much as to be the coaches and help people never get sick. Uh, uh, and so we're we're actually going to be working with Dr. Furman and working with Dr. McDougall and other doctors, we're going to be having this, uh, working with them to develop a, a training program for other doctors so that we can uh, certify them to be nutritional lifestyle doctors, that we can affiliate with our stores so we can have people uh, come that are sick and they can get these type of nutritional doctors to help them to change their lives. 
doctors should be there to help people never get ill. And uh, truthfully, people shouldn't get sick. So uh, here's the benefits that you see. I've already talked about all of them. And so, oh, here's one of the myths I want to address right now as I end up. The healthy eating revolution is not expensive. This is a myth that you cannot eat a healthy diet uh, inexpensively. That is BS. It's totally not true. Work with Jeff Novick, and we did a complete uh, 2,000 calorie a day, 100% of RDA, and you don't need to spend more than about $5 a day. It doesn't mean you have to cook. So you're not going to really get that in prepared foods, but it means you build your diet around uh, whole foods, whole plant foods, basically. It's a vegan diet. Whole plant foods, and uh, uh, you buy, you're getting your beans, you're getting your, your whole grains, and you're getting your, your fruits and vegetables that are in season, uh, and so you don't eat out. And you can, you can all have to spend more than about $5 a day. I'm not going to tell you what we're doing today, but Whole Foods is working on something that I'm very excited about. I'm just going to hint at it, titillate you. That we're we're going to go into these food deserts, and uh, we're going to do something about what's happening with... Um, <laughs> The poor, the poor people in America, uh, uh, can, they ought to have access to really healthy food. It shouldn't cost that much money, and they need to know how to cook it, and they need to know how to, know, need to, know how to eat it. And so we're going to be, we're going to announce the program in 2012. I'm not announcing it today. I'm hinting at it, uh, <laughs> but we will be announcing it in 2012. So look for that. So in conclusion, our nation is overweight. It's unhealthy. The situation is completely preventable and reversible through healthy eating and healthy lifestyles. We have the knowledge to solve the health care crisis in America. We have the knowledge. We know what to do. Um, most people have the potential to completely avoid heart disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes, and other diseases of affluence. Everybody in this room ought to live to be past 100. You should never get heart disease. You should never get cancer. You should never get any of these degenerative diseases. Our company is dedicated as part of our higher purpose, part of our mission, to create a revolution of health in the United States through providing healthier foods, and educating people about the importance of whole foods, plant strong, healthy fats, and nutrient dense foods. And, and I'm here today telling you about it, and I urge you to join us in this revolution. Thanks very much, and I uh, hope the rest of the conference goes well.